Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meer Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to be solving uh, the university question paper which had come in November 2019 under the subject Risk Management. Again, a very important video for all the TY, BMS, M5 students. Okay, in this video, we are going to solve all the types of questions that had come in November 2019 question paper. So, let us start one by one. The very first question was, the following is the information of stock A and B under the possible stage of nature. Okay, and they are asked us to find basically the standard deviation and expected return. Okay, so now how to start? We we'll start with first with a stock A. So we have to take return of A and probability ka data together. So state of nature, probability, return. The next column will be P into R. Okay, returns are your R, your probability is P. When you, mul when you multiply, you get P into R. The total of that is your expected return. Okay. So 1 into 0 0.1 into 5, 0 0.3 into 10, 0 0.5 into 15, 0 0.1 into 20, we get the totals. So therefore, our expected return R bar is sigma P into R, which comes to 13%. That's the first step. Now, in order to find the standard deviation, the next column that we will require will be R minus R bar. That is all the returns minus R bar. So 5 minus 13, 10 minus 13, 15 minus 13 and 20 minus 13, we'll get the respected values. Then the next column will be R minus R bar, the whole square. So 8 square, 3, uh, negative 8 square, negative 3 square, 2 square and four, uh, 7 square will be taken. Last column, P into R minus R bar, the whole square. So probability into the value we just now found. We'll get 6.4, 2.72, 4.9, the total of which comes to 16. The 16 is nothing but variance. Now we need to find the standard deviation. The standard deviation will be the sigma of p into r minus r bar the whole square the square root of that so square root of 16 which comes to 4 so therefore the expected return for stock a was 13 percent and the standard deviation was 4 now in the same case in the same case let us start with stock b okay now how to find data for stock b in the same order okay so now we'll take return of b along with the probability Okay, now the next one we will take is the probability and stock of B ka return. Okay, same column. So we'll have state of nature, probability, return and P into R. So 0 0.1 into 0, 0 0.3 into 8, 0 0.5 into 18 and 0 0.1 into 26. We multiply, we get the total, we get the total as 14. So I expected return, the sigma of P into R is 14 percent. Next, we need R minus R bar. So 0 minus 14, 8 minus 14, 18 minus 14 and 26 minus 14 will get R minus R bar. Next is the square of that. So negative 14 square, negative 6 square, negative 4, negative 12. And last probability multiply by R minus R bar the whole square. When you multiply, we will get our new values as 19.6, 10.8, 8, 14.4. When you total up, we get 52.8. That is our total variance. Okay. So once we get our variance ready. Uh, the standard deviation is the root of that variance, the root of 52.8. Okay, this is 52.8. Okay, so on the calculator, 52.8 divided by uh, this is the square root. Okay, the so square root of 52.8 comes to 7.2. Okay, so that was uh, stock B ka expected return which came to 14% and standard deviation which came to 7.26%. Okay, so this was the very first sum which was asked in that paper. Now let us check. So this was based on expected return and standard deviation. Now the second question was based on covariance and beta. So let us see how to solve that second sum. I hope everyone have understood the first one. Now question the next question given was calculate beta for each of the two securities from the given information so now there is a limited b limited and market always remember beta is compared between the security and market okay so first we'll take a limited along with the market return so rs is your a limited ka values and rm is your market return so we first thing we note to note down all the values of returns of a uh, of rs and uh, market and get the total so market return ka total came to 130 and the stock return ka total came to 120. Now we need to find the average of that. Okay. So RS bar and RM bar, 120 divided by 10 and 130 divided by 10, we get it as 12 and 13. 
the next column will be rs minus rs bar okay so 10 minus 12 6 minus 12 13 minus 12 minus 4 minus 12 and so on so we will get a rs minus rs bar ka values the next we need rm minus rm bar so that will be 12 minus 13 5 minus 13 18 minus 13 negative 8 minus 13 10 minus 13 and so on and we will get our you know the values of rm minus rm uh, rm bar okay, so those are the two important steps now the next column will be very simple the product of these two differences so rs minus rs bar into rm minus rm bar when you you know multiply you will get our next column and the total of that is required that is 778 last column is rm minus rm bar ka whole square and the total of that so minus 1 square minus 8 square 5 square 21 square and so on and we will get the squares once you get these two values these are the most important two values okay now we need to apply two different formulas number one is covariance so covariance ka formula is uh, sigma rs into rm minus rm bar wala the one second last column ka total upon n minus 1 n is 10 so 10 minus 1 becomes 9 so 778 divided by 9 we will get the value as 86.44 next we need to find standard deviation square m the formula for which is uh, you know the last column basically rm minus rm bar the whole square upon n minus 1 so again 1022 divided by 9 we will get the value as 113.55 last we need to find the beta beta is covariance upon standard deviation square m so 86.44 divided by 113 we get it at 0.76 okay this is how we had to find the beta for a limited now similarly we will go for beta for b limited so first we will have to take b limited ka percentage and market value okay and get the total so it came to 120 and 130 similar to the previous one okay we need to now get the averages so rs bar and rm bar will be 12 and 13 the next column will be rs minus rs bar and rm minus rm bar so that will be all your returns minus 12 and our all your market return minus 13 we get the two columns then we multiply these two columns we multiply these two columns and we get the second last column and the total comes to 1031 lastly we take rm minus rm bar the whole square okay in the last column and we get the total order which comes to 1022 once we get that last step what we require is just to apply into the formula so first is covariance so that will be 1031 divided by 9 which comes to 114.55 standard division square m that will be 1022 divided by 9 which comes to 113.55 and last beta is the you know the division of covariance and standard division square m so that will be 114.55 divided by 113.55 which comes to 1.008 so this is how you all had to solve uh, the sum based on beta for a limited and b limited okay i hope everyone have understood that now we jump to the last question which had been asked okay so let us see what was the last question that was asked uh, suppose an insurer estimates that an insurance contract exposure has the following losses. They are giving you the loss and they are giving you the various probabilities. Assume that admin expense which are paid immediately equals to the 20% of expected claim, uh, claim cost. Further, assume that the profit loading is equal to 11% of the expected claim cost. Calculate the fair premium. Okay. Now remember they haven't given you the interest. Whenever interest is not given, we have to assume it and take it as 8%. Okay. Step number one. First, we need to find the expected cost of fair pure premium. You can say the expected claim is nothing but the loss into the probability. So 20 lakh into 0 0.003, uh, 8 lakh into 0 0.010, 2 lakh into 0 0.050 and 50,000 into 0 0.847. We get the total as 66,350. Once you found the pure premium, now let us find the PV of pure premium. Again, PV of uh, 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 the PV of expected claim, that is nothing but the value of expected claim divided by 1 plus interest. Interest have to be assumed at 8%. So we will take it at 1.08. So we get the value as 61,435.19. That is step number 2. 
step number 3 now we need to find the expected administrative cost and they have given you it is going to be 20% of expected claim so expected claim was 66350 so 20% of 66350 comes to 13270 once you found that claim we need to get the pv out of it so pv will again be divided by 1.08 okay so that will be 13270 divided by 1.08 we get it as 12287.04 Okay, the next step number five uh, up to the, the this is the last part where we need to find now that is expected fair pre, uh, fair premium profit which was given here as 11% of expected cost. So 11% of 66350 comes to 7298.50. Once we get that we need to find the PV. So PV will be again this value divided by 1.08 comes to 6757.87. Okay, just have to follow those steps. Last part. We have a fair premium is PV of all the three. First one PV of expected, PV of admin and PV of fair profit. You add up all the three values and we will get the final answer as 80480.10. That is the value of fair premium. Okay. So I hope everyone have understood that. All the three sums from this particular question paper has been solved. So with that we will be ending this video here. Thank you.